Well, before we get started today, I think it's important for you to know this about me. When I go out in public, I'm okay blending into the background. I don't want to stand out and I'm not usually trying to make an impression with my clothes. So when I decided to do this experiment and try wearing all black for a while, I wasn't too worried about it because on a scale of not caring at all what I wear to being current and fashionable, I'm somewhere in the middle and my main goal for my wardrobe for this current season of life that we're in is for it to be very simple, for it to require hardly any brain energy to get dressed in the morning. And so today I want to give you an update on how it's been going wearing all black. I want to show you my summer wardrobe, show you what I have invested in, my $100 pair of pants, which is a lot for me, <laughs> what things I'm still not quite there yet with, and my absolute favorite tip when it comes to decluttering and simplifying your clothes so that you can have a no-brainer wardrobe too. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages six through 11. And we've been minimalist for about seven years. And since we simplified our house, I've had a very simplified wardrobe, but I've often joked that I'm a minimalist who still likes color. And so even as I've shared my clothing in the past, there was still plenty of color in it. But here's what happened. My friend Lee, she took the 100 day wool and challenge where you wear the same merino wool dress for 100 days. And she shared with me along the way and she said, it's so great. I do not have to think about what I'm gonna wear in the morning because I know what I'm gonna wear. And it got me thinking and I was like, okay, I wouldn't wear a dress every day and I've never found anything that I liked enough that I would wear for 100 days in a row. Like, I mean, just being honest, I, there's just nothing I could think of and that would be appropriate for all of the different activities that I do on a daily basis. But I had still just gotten to this point where I wanted my clothing and my wardrobe to take less brain energy and I wanted to get off this cycle of feeling like I needed to buy new clothes each season because what I had wasn't as in, in style or I just I was kind of over it and what's funny is that even as I look back on what I shared a year ago for my wardrobe I don't have any of those pieces anymore I have donated all of them because I didn't actually love any of them and I, I don't know, I think when I have colors and patterns, I wear it for a few times and then I kind of get sick of it. It doesn't feel new and fresh and cute anymore. And when I look back at what pieces have stood the test of time, which ones do I go back to over and over, have lasted more than one season, it's always the things that were black. I just tend towards black. I feel more comfortable in it. It seems to be a little bit more timeless. And so I had thought like, Stop fighting it, right? <laughs> Stop fighting it. Just embrace the fact that you always kind of go back to black and find some pieces that you really like that are the dark colors and that I feel like are kind of timeless and that I could wear over and over and over again without getting tired of them. And so that has been the journey that I've been on these last few months. I have been wearing all black since January, I think, when I made that commitment. And so I wanna let you know how it's going and then show you some of my new favorite pieces. But then, like I said, also share my favorite tip so that you can have a no-brainer wardrobe as well, if that's what you're going for. <laughs> so, all right, so let's talk about how I've gone about creating this new wardrobe. I think when it comes to clothes, we don't really put a lot of thought into it and it gets us into trouble. And so what I mean is that I think that at every season, we should sit down and do a quick inventory of what it is that I need. And so if I actually stop and think about it, I need a handful of t-shirts that I can just wear around the house, I can run an errand in and still feel like I look nice. I need probably only two pairs of jeans, but at least three pairs of leggings. I need some comfortable sweatshirts to wear around the house, but again, I still want them to look a little bit nice. I, how many dress tops do I need right now? Two, three? I don't need that many dressy tops right now, and my preference is that they go with my jeans. So I want the jeans to be where I can kind of dress them up, dress them down, and have it go with all of my tops. And then probably two workout tops would be plenty, and then I just wear my leggings, or I have one pair of black, like, athletic shorts. So if we just take a few minutes to stop and jot down what it is that we need, we can then look at our current wardrobe. So I could look at what I already had, pull that stuff out, 
and then see where the gaps are and what it is that I needed to fill in. So one of the main things that I needed to find was a t-shirt, a black t-shirt that, like I said, dress up, dress down, comfortable, wear around the house. I tried on at least 10 different t-shirts to find one that I liked. I did not think it would be that hard, but I was very committed to finding pieces that I was gonna love, again, that were gonna stand the test of time. Some I ordered, some I grabbed at stores, and in my perfect world, it would be something that was sustainably made, that was of high quality, that would last a really long time, and preferably made in the US as well. So I ordered some merino wool t-shirts, I ordered some off Amazon, I grabbed some at Target, and what I found though throughout this process of trying them on was that I thought I wanted v-neck shirts, but what I realized is that I'm constantly adjusting them because I'm short and a lot of times they sink down too low. And so a scoop neck is actually my favorite. So I found this scoop neck t-shirt on Amazon and they're, it's the Amazon Basics brand. It's two for $20. And so the price was right. It's very comfortable. I feel like it fits well. I like that the sleeves are a little bit fitted, but it did not check the boxes of being more sustainably made. And I don't know how it's gonna last for the long haul. I try to take good care of my blacks. I wash them on delicate. I dry them on our drying rack to help preserve them, but I don't know how it's gonna last over time. But for the time I have been wearing them, I really like it. Comfortable, easy to throw on, that's what I was going for, and the price point, you, I mean, you can't beat it, right? For me, it was very cheap and frugal, the price point was good. However, I do hope to get to a place where I will spend a little bit more and find something that is more sustainably made. So just know that this is the conflict going on for me right now, <laughs> it's my, cheapness versus really trying to invest in good things that will last a long time now. But if I don't love it, I can't keep it. <laughs> so I will get there. Um, but something that I, I did spend a little bit more money on that I have in my experience found that it's worth spending more money on are my jeans. And so I wanted to find a pair of blackish crop jeans. So they didn't have to be black, but I wanted them to go with black. I tried on eight different pairs of crop pants and about the only ones that fit were these gray kind of washed out ones um but these are awesome i've had jeans from express in, in the past that i really liked i like that you can order them in ankle length and short length since i'm short but they are stretchy they come up super high and i feel like they will flex if my weight fluctuates a little bit they will be very forgiving to that so these were 80 dollars, which again for me it's all relative for me it's a lot of money, but I do believe they will last a very long time. And so to me that felt like a good investment. So I have those and then I have a pair of light wash jeans that I already had. And so those will round out my jeans. These were only $20 they're comfortable enough but for this season i like them and they can fill in the gap of the other pair of jeans that i wanted and then when it came to more a little bit more casual style pants to wear around the house uh, i had wanted to find a pair of joggers because i don't always like wearing leggings when i go other places um just so they're not quite so fitted and so i i ordered two pairs of joggers one from amazon for 30 dollars one from lululemon for 98 dollars and it was so interesting to compare them side by, side by side because there was no comparison. I put on the Amazon ones and I'm like, they're fine. The material was fine. I could see wearing them for a season. But then I put on the ones from Lulu and I was just like, oh, these, it's just, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. They fit well. The material felt awesome. And so again, spending $98 on a pair of pants is a ton for me but i believe i could have these for multiple years or i could wear them every single day and at least they would last a year which to me when i look at it, that it, you know people talk about sometimes break it down to cost per wearing i know i'm going to come out ahead with the lulu pants compared to the amazon ones so those two the express jeans and the lulu pants those were the two pieces that i spent the most on and that i felt very good about and confident about the other things that i tried on that were a little more expensive i just i didn't love them enough to commit to it so i said okay i'm going to go with the cheaper option Option for now but as I continue to refine this wardrobe I would like to work in better pieces but I know I'll get there and so those were like the the largest chunk of my summer wardrobe budget for sure but then I did want to find a couple nicer tops and so I know one of the hesitations with wearing all black is summer Sun 
honestly in Minnesota we have a handful of really hot days and then you don't go in the sun on those days <laughs> and so I, it's not as much of a concern for us here but I did have two lighter colored tops one I had had from last summer one I got this year so I have two white tops as well so they're a little bit dressier um, so if we're going to church going out I can work those in as well so my whole wardrobe is not black I have those two white tops and then I did get this other black blouse off of Amazon I I actually really like it. I just liked kind of the lace detailing on the v-neck. I like the cap sleeves. I don't usually like to do sleeveless. So I just thought it was cute and easy to wear. And it was like $18 on Amazon. So again, I want to get away from these types of purchases. But for now, it'll be okay. And then I also wanted to find just a cute dress that was fairly casual we I mean we honestly don't get dressed up that much I do have that black dress I wore um, to a wedding a year and a half ago <laughs> I still have that for like a dressier um, event so I kept that but I wanted to find something a little bit more casual um, just could wear to church or small groups or something like that so I found this dress at Target it is a v-neck which wouldn't be my preference but talk about super easy to wear I don't feel like I have to suck in or adjust it. It's a good length, it's not too short. Um, and so I really like this dress a lot and I think we'll get a lot of use out of it. But again, thinking ahead, I don't think I need any more dressy clothes <laughs> than that. And I know how sometimes when we go shopping, we end up grabbing more dressy stuff than we actually have occasions to wear. So I'm trying to be very aware of just not getting it too much. And I don't wanna to forget to mention that our Take Your House Back course is open just to the end of April. It's a course that I created with Cass from Clutterbug and Dana from A Slob Becomes Clean, where we help you declutter your entire house, including clothes. But what's so fun about it is we get to do it together. So there's an awesome community that goes along with it and save the date for May 1st. If you join the course before then, we're gonna be doing an all day declutter together. From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we are gonna walk you through decluttering every area of your house. So we hope you can join us. Find all the details for that down below. Here's where I think we kind of get it wrong where we go when we go to declutter our clothes is that we just start holding stuff up and saying, do I wear this? Have I wore it? Am I gonna wear it again? I don't know. And then we go on to the next piece and we're like, I, I, I don't know, I, I kind of like it. If I lost a couple pounds, it would really fit well. And we just start going piece by piece and it gets very confusing. And we're like, well, I don't know. And at the end of it, we haven't really gotten rid of much and our wardrobe's not much better. So what I highly recommend doing is clear off your bed or another area where you can lay out your wardrobe, create your wardrobe. But here's the rule. I only put stuff on here that fits right now not that will fit in five pounds not that i kind of have to adjust or suck in no i'm only putting stuff on here that fits and it does not matter what i weigh or what size i am because no matter what we all need clothes that fit right now that's we feel good about ourselves then we can't keep punishing ourselves and trying to wear this stuff that doesn't fit we deserve to have clothes that fit right now so like i said in the beginning i think it's so helpful to start out with an inventory okay how many pairs of pants do i need and i put those on the bed again only putting on ones that fit how many pairs of leggings how many pairs of workout shirts how many casual t-shirts how many sweatshirts or other things for layering how many dress tops and we lay all of that out on the bed and we build out our wardrobe on the bed and what is so great about this is then if i'm going to put jeans on the bed and i want to have two pairs but i honestly only have one pair that i can put on the bed because all the other ones are tight then we say okay i need another pair of jeans that fit right now and now i don't feel bad going out and buying one pair of jeans because i know that i really need it when i look at all these clothes in my closet and on the dresser and on the floor it's very hard to see what we actually need but if i'll go through this work of building out my wardrobe on the bed i can very clearly see the gaps in my wardrobe so write down make a list what things do you need and then i also really like these canvas bags for putting clothing into so these work great for off-season stuff but also for stuff that maybe doesn't fit right now so again if i'm going to lay out my jeans and i come across a pair and i'm like i really like these jeans but they don't quite fit right now so i can't put them on the bed because they're not actually an option for right now i'm going to put it in here and i'm only going to keep what fits in here so i'm going to keep my favorites so when i lose weight then i will pull this back out and i will have those but for right now I need two pairs of jeans that fit. So I either need to find it from what I have in my room right now, or I'm gonna need to go out and buy another piece. But do you see how now, 
when we go shopping, we're very intentional. What do I actually need? Because in the past, I would just mindlessly, I would, you know, walk through the women's clothing section. I would look at the clearance rack and I would grab stuff even though it wasn't what I actually needed. And again, I've said this before, but this is how we end up with tons of clothes and nothing to wear because we don't take the time to compile a complete wardrobe of clothes that fit right now. Have I said it enough times? <laughs> clothes that fit right now, that are comfortable and that you like wearing. The other thing that I've noticed is really nice is that I can simplify all of my accessories, all of my undergarments, my shoes, everything just needs to go with black, which is actually pretty simple. <laughs> and so I've really appreciated that about this as well. So I would love to know, where do you fall on, do you invest in good quality pieces of clothing? I feel like I've been talking about my cheapness a lot lately, like with the chairs in our bedroom and clothing. I would love to know. I, I don't feel like I'm the only one. Are you able to invest in good, high quality clothing that lasts a long time? Or do you still find that to be kind of a struggle? Also, if you have found any brands that are sustainably made, ethically made, would you share that down below? Because that is so important. And I think many of us would like to go that direction. It just, it takes a lot of intentionality and brain power. I mean, I, I feel like every day I've been getting stuff in the mail and trying it on and like, no, I have to return that. Like it takes, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like it takes kind of a lot of intentionality. And so I would love to know if you found any brands that you love and where you're at with your wardrobe. Do you need to pare it down a little bit more? Do you feel like you've gotten it to a place where you can open your closet doors and everything in there is an option? It's such a good feeling. And that's that's what makes our wardrobe a no-brainer. So share that down below. It's always fun to hear where you're at in your process as well. But I hope this is helpful. I hope you have a really good day. And if you haven't done so already, we'd love it if you subscribe. A thumbs up is the best compliment that you can give us. And we'll definitely look forward to visiting with you again soon.